Let's talk about some of the differences between the trachea, which is part of your respiratory tract, and your esophagus, which is part of your digestive tract. You see, the trachea is a tube made of cartilage that makes it so it's always open. That's how you can be constantly breathing in and out, while the esophagus, on the other hand, as you can see, isn't always open. It only kind of increases in diameter as you're swallowing food or drinks. You can kind of picture digestive material going through it. What's gonna happen is it's gonna open up and then it's gonna close right behind it, just because it doesn't need to constantly be open like the trachea does. And another interesting thing about the esophagus is that part of it is made of skeletal muscle and part of it is made of smooth muscle. That means you can control some of it and other parts of it you are just unable to control. Your stomach is capable of two different types of digestion, chemical and mechanical. So chemical digestion is gonna happen when stomach acid is going to be secreted into this hollow inside and that's going to bathe the food and break it down into this pasty, liquidy substance called chyme. Mechanical digestion happens due to these gastric rugi, these stomach folds you're looking at here, just grinding against one another, as well as the stomach contracting and moving it around, almost like a cement truck. What you're looking at here is the pancreas, which has obviously been cut, and you can see that it's located posterior or behind the stomach, which again has also been cut. Now, the pancreas is extremely unique in its function because it kind of performs a double duty for the body. It both secretes enzymes, which are essential for the proper digestion and absorption of nutrients, and also secretes hormones directly into the bloodstream. And those hormones are insulin and glucagon, which are going to lower and raise your blood sugar levels accordingly. What you're looking at here is a section of the human small intestine, and you can see I've cut this small window into it, and this allows us to obviously see inside. And what you're looking at here are what are called circular folds. Now remember, the small intestine's job is to absorb nutrients. So this brown coloration you're seeing here, that's just leftover digested material. But what you can't see is that on the surface of these circular folds are really tiny structures called villi. And those villi are going to absorb nutrients and bring it into the bloodstream and send it to the liver. Have you ever wondered what's on the other side of the umbilicus or your belly button or your navel? I mean, we all know that there was an umbilical cord that would then connect to the placenta and that would be inside of mom's uterus. So if we go ahead and turn this over, what we see is nothing. It's just connective tissue. You see, there used to be blood vessels, the umbilical arteries and the umbilical vein. And what would happen is that vein would take newly oxygenated blood and nutrient-rich blood and deliver it to the growing fetal body. But all there's waste products. So then the carbon dioxide and waste products would then travel through the arteries, go through this umbilicus, out the umbilical cord to the placenta, and mom's body would then get rid of it. But as soon as you're born, what happens is those blood vessels detach and they essentially become different tissues and you're left with what's essentially your very first scar. You have an apron of fat just underneath your abdominal muscles. So if I go ahead and reflect this back, you see this yellowy tissue here. This is called the greater omentum. And I say apron on purpose because it literally drapes over your small intestines. But the greater omentum serves a variety of functions. It can help to minimize infection and literally wrap around the side of an infection to help minimize how much it spreads. It's going to be loaded with immune cells, so very, very important for your immune system. And then obviously it's going to store energy in the form of fat. You see this gigantic organ here? This is the liver, except this liver was not healthy when this individual passed. And we can tell because of this discoloration right here, right here. We can see another one right there and even over here. In fact, these are all cancerous, tumorous nodules because this individual passed away from colorectal cancer, which likely began here in the sigmoid colon, but then metastasized and spread to their liver. The lub-dub sound of the heartbeat is not actually the sound of the heart muscle contracting. Instead, what you're hearing is the turbulent flow through the blood that's generated as valves, such as this one called the mitral valve, are slamming shut. Let's talk about shin splints. So first off, you can see we've cut a little window into the tibia here, and that allows you to see the medullary cavity, which is the hollow center of a long bone. But if we draw our attention over here, you can see this tissue called the periosteum. And periosteum is gonna reside on the outside of compact bone. But periosteum is gonna be loaded with nerve endings, bone cells, and a whole variety of other things. But you can see that it's continuous with this tissue here called the fascia. See, as I put my probe under here, you can see that they blend with one another. In fact, they're made of the exact same type of tissue. The only reason we call them something different is because they're in different locations. That's just how anatomy works. Well, in shin splints, you can get an overworked muscle, which can actually start to tug on the fascia, which can then tug on the periosteum.
periosteum and cause an inflammation. And since it's loaded with nerve endings, that means you're gonna get a, quite a bit of pain. I hate to break it to you, but this is not called the weenus. I have no idea where that term came from. This is just elbow skin or skin superficial to the olecranon process if you wanna be really fancy about it. But that doesn't mean that this is uninteresting because just underneath the elbow skin is a bursa, which is a fluid filled pouch that you can see we've cut a window into so you can see that it's hollow inside. And that bursa is meant to produce friction between the elbow skin and the ulna underneath that soft tissue.